guys, welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. So right now I'm in front of Commuter Craft. This is another aircraft that I personally wanted to check out and you guys also requested for me to look at. So I'm just gonna ask some questions about it. It is an experimental, we have no idea right now when it's going to come to market. Uh, but from what I've been told, it was redesigned. So I'm just gonna ask them a few, uh, a few questions. Come on. Okay guys, so here we have the Commuter Craft. This is the redesigned model. Uh, you can't really see the interior. The, the window's a little tinted, but the interior looks very, uh, very spacious there. Um, but we're gonna be talking to John in a little bit. Hopefully he answers some questions for us. And this is this your standard tricycle, fixed landing gear. I don't think this is retractable. And what's uh, unique about this aircraft, you have control surfaces up here at the nose, and it is a pusher motor, meaning that the motor is in the back of the aircraft. So it's a very, uh, very unique design. I'm not sure if this is just the aileron or flaps, but we'll find out. And that looks like a Titan engine. And like I said, your motor is in the back, so it's pushing you. Control surfaces back here, another one back here. I think it's uh, it might be two uh, two rudders. See right here, and then right there on the other side. Like a suicide door. Easy to step in. You gotta watch your head though. All right, let's turn this one on. And I'm on the passenger side right now. What I want to do is see this. Okay, guys. So that could be. It could be. Yes. I'm in the interior of the commuter craft. Uh, way too much room here. Again, the only thing is getting inside. Okay, because you have this edge over here by the door, but once you're in. Very comfortable, and as you can see, the uh, I don't know, so much room back here. This could be a four seater, in my opinion. We have so much room back, you can literally sleep back there, and uh, really quality leather, leather seats. And uh, this is a full glass panel from Dynan. Now, in terms of uh, there's no control services yet. But I don't know, for example, where the throttle or the control uh, sticks, if they go with the control stick, I don't know where that will be placed. But just the cockpit itself, very nice. Okay, and leg room, I have way too much room here. So your rudder pedals will be back there. Um, you got your radio in the middle console here. And uh, again, your glass panel. Okay, there were no control surfaces in the demo there, but right here seems like what would be uh, an example of a model. So you have side stick uh, control, and then your this would be like the middle console where you have your power, your prop, which is a constant speed prop, and then your mixture, all knobs there. So there you have it. So I spoke to John probably a few months ago and he told me that uh, currently the aircraft is being well designed. Um, and why is that? And you can you tell, tell us a little bit about why basically the process of the whole thing? Sure. Uh, the aircraft was lengthened about two feet, so that we had storage space behind the passenger seats. Looks like you can sleep back. Well, the fuel tank's not in there. Oh, okay. So, so we have a 50 gallon fuel tank that will go back there. Still, there'll be 24 cubic feet of storage. Okay. Um, now, the aircraft itself, it's, it has a pusher motor. I was looking at, it's a unique design. Uh, the back there has two, are those going to be like two rudder pedals or I mean two uh, rudder control surfaces back there? Yeah, those are the rudders, yeah. Okay, but so they're linked, they're not independent. Oh, okay, so you have double uh, rudders in the back. Now, I only saw, it's, the, the wings are quite short, and so and I only saw one control surface on the wing. Is that the aileron or the flap? The aileron, the aileron. No flaps. Okay, what about the nose? Then? There's also those the are for trim. 
little control oh, surfaces on the Like an elevator type. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, so your elevator trim, but there's also one in the back also. Okay, so you have, uh, on, the, on the nose, you have your trim there. On the wings itself, those are your ailerons. So the aircraft has no flap. Is there a reason why it was designed that way? It doesn't either. It doesn't when, when you come across the fence and raise the nose, it gets quite draggy. Okay. So it slows down a lot on its own. And it'll come across a land between 60 and 55 miles an hour. Oh, wow. That's a slow, that's slow, that's slow air. And see, this is something I always say. You want speed for your aircraft, but it's also as important how slow that aircraft can go. And this can be controlled. And still be controlled. And this can go 55 miles per hour, which is very slow for an aircraft. Now, again, it is an experimental. Can you tell us like what type of engine choices we have? Right. Right now, we're offering two engine choices from Continental. They're the Titan IO340, which is 180 horse, and the Continental Titan IO370, which is 200 horse. Okay. And uh, Cato constant speed prop. Awesome. Now, what kind of performance do you expect from the projected right now is cruise about 200 miles an hour. And, uh, That's fast. Yeah, the total weight right now is about 1,950 pounds. And the useful load, Richard's rated it conservatively at 850 pounds. Once we test, he thinks it's either going to fall or not. And what kind of range would you guess? 900 miles plus. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's more than the most pilots need, to be honest with you. Uh, now, I don't know if we can talk about price because, again, right now you're still in the process of being built. Can you give us an idea of what sure. it's going to cost? Yeah, it's, he's decided to break it into three packages, if you will. So the base package is right at 150000 but that includes. Uh, well, let me back up here. You come to our factory, it's a kit. Right. So you come to our factory in Cartersville, Georgia, which is north of Atlanta, and you basically assemble the fuselage over a two or three week period. Okay. And then you leave it with us. And we'll do the interior, the avionics, the engine installation, and the paint. Um, plus, uh, you get the um, transition trailer. Wow, and all of that you said would be 150. Now, depending on whatever options or right. yeah, you can add additional options. One of the options we're going to offer is a ballistic parachute, okay. and BRS, um, airbag seatbelts, air conditioning, upgraded interior, you know, things like that. Now, my last question is when is this thing expected to? To the market or as soon as we get back from Oshkosh, this one will go into flight testing, and we should have two more folks coming to the factory probably in September to start building it. Wow, so we're looking at literally the end of the year. We, we hope to have three or four flying by the end of the year, and we'll go into full production probably by next summer. Yeah, we've got a few more people in the pipeline. That was awesome. So I guess I'll save this question then for, for next year. I was going to ask, what do you expect the typical time uh, to be? You know, uh, you would need people to, to start building first. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, the goal is to two or three weeks to have it on the wheels. Right. And then to finish it up three or four months. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate you talking to us. There you have it, guys. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. Okay, again, my name is Mike, and thank you for watching. Peace.